A New York immigrant rights advocate uh, prevented ICE officers from arresting two undocumented immigrants in his car. They pulled him over and showed him what they claimed was arrest paperwork. Now he pushed back, citing the Constitution. Listen to this. Those are not warrants of arrest, yes, sir. They are, sir. Warrant of arrest of alien. Yeah, warrant of arrest of alien, alien not signed by a judge. It's not a judicial warrant. I have no obligation to oblige by that this warrant. Is a, this is a lawful warrant. Did signed by a judge. Of the Immigration and Nationality Act. And a, a, an official designated with that authority. That's not a warrant. That is a warrant. No, it's not. It's a Department of Homeland Security order. It's a, it's a warrant. Okay. No, it's not a warrant. It's not a warrant under the Constitution of the United States. It's a warrant under the Immigration and Nationality Act of the United States. Okay, that's fine, but it's not under the Constitution. You have no jurisdiction over me as a citizen. I'm the driver of this vehicle. Okay, are you familiar with uh, Title Eight, Section 1324 of U.S. Code? Uh, somewhat. Somewhat. In what regard? I'm studying to be a Department of Justice accredited representative, so I've been through trainings. Okay. And I have copies of the, actually, in this box right here, I have a copy of a real warrant and a copy of that, just so people know not to listen to that. Joining us now, Brian McCormack, Executive Director of Columbia County Sanctuary Movement. He is who you just saw in that clip. Brian, thank you for taking the time to be with us. Um, what, was the, what was the reaction from the officer at the end of the day when you had gone through this whole spiel? First of all, thank you for having me and shedding light on this important issue. I think the reaction of the officer, he was quite surprised because the normal tactics that ICE uses to violate the rights of our neighbors uh, did not work here because I knew my rights, as did the passengers of my vehicle. So uh, the Washington Post reports that um, essentially it wasn't the virtue of your argument, but it was the, the interference that uh, urged these two ICE officers to pull back. They say in a statement to the Post that ICE spokesman said an individual interfered with the efforts of deportation officers who sought to uh, get these two people out of your, your vehicle. That interference caused the officers to depart instead of further disruption. What's your reaction to that? That it was the interference that, uh, that caused them to pull back, not the virtue of, of your argument. What I would say is that the only thing uh, that was interfered with is the life of our community members. Of course, ICE has absolutely no regard for disrupting the lives of community members, of immigrants in our country. And I really do believe that it was the fact that they had no authority because we knew our rights and because there was no judicial warrant, and that's why they left the scene. Brian, how often does a situation like this happen? You know, I'm not really sure. It's hard to tell. Uh, unfortunately, we usually only hear about it when a video like this is recorded, which is, is great. You know, recording is something that we teach all of our community members in our Know Your Rights trainings, but I do know that it has happened before, and it's been done by both allies and immigrants alike. So what is the training that you're going through that prepared you for this and how can other people um, who are in this position kind of know what their rights under the Constitution are? I don't have any formal training for Know Your Rights. Our organization facilitates trainings for community members and allies. It essentially gives you the knowledge of what your rights are in a given uh, series of, of situations or scenarios. And so I knew that I did not have to open the door to my vehicle nor to my house without a judicial warrant as mandated by the Constitution. And I think this is very important because we do have rights and those rights have power and exercising those rights could be the difference between our neighbors going home to their families at night or being thrust into the deportation pipeline. And why do you think those rights are not more prolific? Why are, are they not part of the conversations that are being had with people so they can protect themselves? Yeah, I, d I really don't believe that there's enough Know Your Rights education on a variety of issues in this country, and I believe the more people who know their rights, uh, the stronger our rights become collectively. All right, Brian McCormack, thanks for being with us. Uh, this uh, video that was posted is getting a strong reaction online mm -hmm. and a response there from, from ICE as well. Uh, thanks so much for being with us on New Day. Thank you for having me.